Hello folks and welcome. So I had a subscriber ask for this video. They were asking about gaming on Linux Mint Cinnamon. So I'm not a super gamer, but I have this machine here that qualifies for one. And it has all the hardware for gaming and I did install a 3D game to demo for you. And I'll talk about, uh, you know, maybe processors, RAM, um, hard drives, gaming cards, and also um, gaming mice, because I have a gaming mouse here too. And I'll talk about all that in this video. Um, I had a second user that expressed displeasure with the Edge version of Cinnamon using a 6.2 series kernel using an NVIDIA graphics card. I'm using the same on this machine with an NVIDIA graphics card. However, maybe I'm on a different driver than he has. I'll talk about a little bit about AMD graphics card versus NVIDIA because most of my machines use AMD. This one happens to use an NVIDIA. And uh, more importantly, I'm going to talk about, um, again, gaming mice and maybe some of the reasons you want to take and think about some subjects regarding gaming. So welcome, folks. I'm filming in 1920 by 1080. You can adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary. A lot of them default to 460. So I'm going to close this briefly and just make mention of the subscription key. I have over 200 plus videos there for all kinds of tips and tricks. This wallpaper I got off the internet, some sort of Star Wars thing. Just thought I'd throw that up there for a little bit of fun. So the mouse that I'm using, you probably can't tell what it is, but this is a gaming mouse. This is a G502 Lightspeed made by Logitech. So this uh, application is called Piper. Piper is found in your software manager. Piper is not compatible with all gaming mice, but it is with mine. Also, when you use Piper, um, if you have, a, uh, let's say you have a mouse that you started with and then you plug in your gaming mouse after you boot it in, you may have to restart um, Cinnamon all the way from scratch, reboot in other words to get this application to recognize this. It likes to be there when your mouse is plugged in, okay? Otherwise you get that wrap trap looking thing. And if your uh, device is incompatible, you get the same thing. It looks like a rat trap. So Piper again can be found in your software manager. And if you go visit uh, Piper on GitHub, there's where you can find supported devices right here. Okay, now I'm gonna continue. So I have configuration of buttons. You may have heard me mention that middle click button on some of my videos. It's actually the little switch underneath the scroll wheel. There's actually two more on this mice, right and left wheel. So again, I have different resolutions, dots per inch, different sensitivity, and I can turn off these LEDs if I like, all from this application. This again is Piper. All right, so let's talk hard drives. Right click, system settings. Let's go to disks for a second. I have lots of hard drives in here. So this is what I have booted in currently. This is a Samsung solid state 980 Pro, two terabyte NVMe drive. You can go to amazon.com to look up what an NVMe drive is if you don't know. They're normally plugged in the bottom of the motherboard. I'm using a tower computer. You, you will find NVMe's nowadays on laptops. Anyways, NVMEs are a little bit faster than standard solid state drives. This is a solid state drive, yes, but this is a little different from the standard solid state drive that uses serial ATA or SATA. Those SATA cables are normally plugged into the drive and somewhere on your motherboard or a connector if you're using a laptop. They're a little bit slower than these. These are a little bit faster. Then you have the spinning hard drives, the one that uh, are connected to more likely a SATA cable nowadays. In the old days, they were on ribbon cables. But in either case, you want a fast drive, NVMEs. However, you need to have a motherboard that you can fit these into if you're using a tower computer, for instance. But I thought I'd at least let you see the model number. All right, so we talked about the mouse. We talked about the operating system again. This is Cinnamon 6.2, the Edge version. Now let me talk about graphic cards. As I pointed out earlier, this um, particular user had left me a note with a bad experience with the Edge version of Cinnamon 
on a NVIDIA graphics card. I particularly don't have that problem, but maybe I'm using a different driver that he has. So AMD graphic cards versus NVIDIA. Well, my other systems use AMD graphics cards. They don't require a separate driver install, unlike NVIDIA. NVIDIA, you have two choices, the open source driver or the proprietary driver. So AMD in the past, my experience has always been friendly toward the Linux world versus NVIDIA, not so much. I kind of dislike the open source world for the longest time. I don't even understand why. And I've been around computers for many, many, many years. I've been around Linux ever since it was founded. And before that, I was uh, running computers with other systems. But more importantly, if you install, install the NVIDIA driver, you will get an NVIDIA settings box. All right, now I'm going to open this. Before you change your driver. Now, when you install Cinnamon with an NVIDIA card, it will install the open source driver. Now, if you decide, if you decide that you are wanting the proprietary driver, may I suggest that you make sure TimeShift is running? Just in case you do need to do a system restore. So if you don't know too much about TimeShift, it uses rsync for making your backups of your system files. Not so much your personal files. It normally excludes them. I have lots of videos on rsync on how to use personal backups. But more importantly, TimeShift is found on the installation media that you installed Mint with. With whatever, if you use Cinnamon, Mate, XFCE, LMD6, I don't care. TimeShift is found on all of them. When you open up TimeShift on your live media, it will uh, open up without a password and it'll open up the wizard. Again, it's using rsync by default. You just hit finish and allow it to scan your drive. Click the restore point and in 10 minutes you're back to where you were instead of reinstalling your whole system and applications. The application part takes forever. So that's one solution for why you'd want to use TimeShift, not only for just switching drivers, but for switching anything for that matter. It's always a good idea to have these running in the background. Most people forget all about TimeShift. Once you activate it, it runs in the background, no prompts normally on a daily basis, and we forget all about it. All right, so that installs the open source driver by default, and then you can elect, elect to install the proprietary driver. And you can see I've got one in use. But you probably noticed I'm not using the recommended driver. Now, why would that be? Because on my particular card, the 535 driver gave me some hassles. So I'm using the five and a quarter because it ran better than 535 on my card. I can't answer this for all NVIDIA graphic cards because they're all different. But more importantly, this one worked better than this driver. Let me give you another ex example. So since I have the NVIDIA driver installed, you will have an NVIDIA settings box. This occurs after you install the driver and reboot. Providing everything works, you can come back into system settings and you'll see this box. So I have had a different channel before and some of you folks know this. But more importantly, on my previous channel, I used to make mention of this one. The uh, 4K mode on this particular video card with the NVIDIA driver used to cut off icons. It used to cut off the sides in this mode right here, but not this mode. The 1080 mode worked just fine. Now, since then, they've done some changes and fixed that problem for the most part. There's still other problems with the other driver, and that's why I chose not to use it. So this is one of the reasons that I make mention sometimes when you switch from an open source driver to a proprietary driver, we always like to blame the operating system. And, it, and in some cases, it could be the driver itself. That is why I'm using a five and a quarter versus five at 35 as an example, because there was something not right with it. So in either case, um, you know, we can't always blame Linux Mint for all the woes because we are dealing with different hardware. You know, over time you get updates and all that good stuff. But again, I use mostly AMD cards on my machines and they don't require a driver. All their updates are done right through the shield if I'm dealing with Mint. 
If I'm dealing with other operating system, they also get updated that way too, through their update managers. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a sample of that game that I told you I installed. So you can find this on uh, the software manager. Just type in um, XOM and you can install Exonotic. It's only available on Flatpak. And uh, they're, they're horrible screenshots, by the way. It consumes about three gigs of hard drive space. It comes from flathub.org. I think about 32 or 36 different Linux distributions use that site. Flatpak software comes uh, and runs in isolated environments. Normally it doesn't need anything from your system when you install that. So yes, it is a big hefty download, but in case you wanna play, let me talk about it. This will go full screen. And uh, more importantly, I can also go from uh, screen resolutions and go higher. It's whatever my video card will support. That one, my video card supports that mode. So that's your standard 4K modes. Okay, and then below. All right, so I'm currently filming in that mode currently. So let's go take a peek at it. I'm just gonna do a create, and you can probably see that also has servers online. If you want to play by yourself, you slide on some bots. I'll use the first map. It's good enough, just to give you the example. This may be a little loud, so I apologize. So let's take a peek at this. I will just walk around the map, firing a couple of guns while I'm at it. I think there's another toy in here somewhere. It's one example. This is uh, not a super high and dense uh, graphic game but it's a fun play nonetheless so I'm gonna stop right before this weapon and let you see the detailing on it I think you can probably see it while it's spinning I'm gonna grab a hold of it and switch as I fire this weapon you can see the, the very detailing on it the things look like pistons on the top they'll retract and come back up just to give you some examples of that okay so it's not too bad it's kind of fun to play all right, folks, so you choose your, um, your toys. Again, for hard drives, maybe NVMEs. If you got a spinning hard drive, maybe switch over from a regular solid state. If you can afford an NVME, just remember that you have to have a motherboard that they can accommodate, uh, whatever you can afford in RAM. And uh, of course, processor is the same, unless you're stuck with a laptop. And then you're probably forced with the processor and whatever graphic card, possibly even the drive itself. But um, in most cases, the RAM is upgradable. And don't forget about Piper. If you are wanting like a game mouse experience, again, Logitech G502 Lightspeed. And you can see all that information on Amazon.com if you want to see pictures of it. Again, the wallpaper, I don't remember where I got, somewhere off the internet. Thank you for watching.